Yo, what's up everybody? This is Jose from Southern Life. On today's video, we're gonna talk about how long it's gonna take for Southwest Florida to recover from Hurricane Ian. I want you guys to know that when it comes to the businesses, the furniture stores, the restaurants, and the vast majority of the urban sprawl from Naples, Fort Myers, Northport, the areas that were hit the hardest, that along US 41 and 75, the vast majority of businesses are back and functioning. If you need to buy furniture, there's furniture stores. If you need to buy restaurants, there's restaurants open and functioning. So the vast majority of the infrastructure, the airports, the roadways, the electricity and the internet, all the basic infrastructure is already in place for 90% of Southwest Florida. It means that Southwest Florida is pretty much functioning. Now, if you live in an older neighborhood and you bought a house built in the 1960s and 1950s and your roof is gone, you might not have a roof now. Now, I've been telling you guys for the longest. I remember making a video where I said, don't buy a mobile home in South Florida. Don't buy an old house that's not up to the building code. How long have I been telling people not to buy mobile homes? I have a video, I made a video saying why you should never buy a mobile home in Florida. On that video, hundreds of people went and told me how they bought a mobile home in Florida and it's working just fine. Some of those people at this point are homeless because they didn't listen to me. I've been telling you guys, don't buy a mobile home in Florida. Don't buy a house that's built before the building code. I've also told people, if your net worth is less than $200,000, you don't have any business in South Florida. So if you move to South Florida and move into apartments and live paycheck to paycheck, when Jose's video told you not to do that, and now your apartment got flooded and you're homeless, that's on you because I've been trying to tell you not to do that. You don't listen. When you don't listen, you have consequences. A vast majority of the working class people in Southwest Florida understand that. When I was poor, I moved to Alabama. And in Alabama, I was able to advance economically. So if you move down here, and everybody's telling you, don't move down here, there's no jobs, there's hurricanes, you're not going to be able to save any money, you're going to be living paycheck to paycheck, don't move into a mobile home, if you don't have a, a six month safety net, don't come down here. You, you didn't listen to none of that. And now you're homeless or now you're in a mobile home and the roof is gone. That's on you because we told you not to do that. Maybe in the future, you, this could be a good lesson that when there's people giving you warnings about something you should listen to. When I moved to Alabama, they warned me Alabama was Alabama. I didn't listen to it. I found out firsthand. You moved to Florida, your roof is gone. You found out firsthand. The vast majority of the infrastructure is already in place and function now. The rich people in Naples, along the coast, on Gulf Shore, all the way along the Gulf Shore, those people, they're now part of the infrastructure down here. Those are residential, 80% of those houses are second homes. So those people ain't homeless. That's their second or third or fourth home along the beach. Those people ain't homeless, so they're not part of the infrastructure. They don't have jobs down here. When you move along Bonita Beach Road and, and Barefoot Beach, all the houses there are gone. But again, those are $10 million houses. And the vast majority of those houses are empty half the year, seven to ten million dollar houses that are empty. Those people don't have jobs down here. They're, they're just coming down here for two months of the year to get out of the winter. When you move into Fort Myers Beach, Fort Myers Beach has never been predictable. It's not part of the economy down here. Fort Myers Beach, if the red tide comes along, they have to shut it down. If a hurricane comes along, they have to shut it down. If there's a virus, they have to shut it down. Fort Myers Beach, the whole island of Fort Myers Beach, uh, there are residents, there are full-time residents, but they're not the majority. The majority of people there, and there's no businesses there that are part of the infrastructure. All those are tourist-related businesses that have very little uh, influence on what happens on the mainland. So when you look at the mainland of Southwest Florida, yes, the beaches are gone. Yes, the barrier uh, islands are gone. Yes, a lot of the homes along the coast are destroyed, but that's not part of the infrastructure down here. Yeah, the beaches are gonna be closed for a long time. And, and how long is it gonna to take to recover? Well, here's a more updated um, opinion on this situation. A lot of people did not understand what I said in the video. So I made a video where we talked about how long it would take to recover. And some people did not understand what I said. 
What I said was that the main infrastructure, the businesses, the furniture stores, the restaurants, and all that would be functioning in a brief period of time, and that's already taken place. Now, to get the sand off the beach, I've heard estimates from one to two years. And in the video that I made uh, in Gulf Shore and Naples along the beach, I mentioned that the process to recycle that sand would be an extremely elaborate process. I don't even know how to begin how that's going to be done. So we're looking at people who are living along the coast and their HOAs, their management pro pro uh, companies, uh, and their communities are telling them it's going to take at least one year before you're even allowed to move back in. So you have to understand this, Naples along the coast, Bonita Springs along the coast, uh, Fort Myers Beach, and all the barrier islands, and all those beaches, that's gonna take one to two years before it's back to function. But that's not what I said on the video. On the video I said that the vast majority of the restaurants, infrastructure, all that will be powered, all that will be back, in, and, and it's already back everywhere. Now, how long is it gonna take for you to go back to Fort Myers Beach again? And have up here, I mean, those are at least two years at this point. You're looking at some, some parts of the, re, you know, reconstruction and rebuilding. We're talking two years for along the coast. Going back to those beaches, there's people who think they're going to come down here to Fort Myers and they're going to Naples and they're going to be on the beaches this year right away. Don't come down here to tourists. Go to St. Pete, come up here to Sarasota. Go to Jupiter on the other coast. Go to Jacksonville Beach. There's a lot of great beaches in Florida. Jacksonville Beach, St. Pete, Clearwater, Sarasota, uh, back on the other coast. You got Miami's cleaned up a lot. It's not what it used to be. Miami's fancier than Naples and Sarasota. You got Broward County. Hey, we just spent a, uh, a week down there after the hurricane. We didn't want to be in Fort Myers, so we spent a week over there. We spent a week between Broward County, Dade County, Palm Beach County. Uh, those counties are clean, they're safe, um, the food, you got incredible restaurants, tropical vibes. Go somewhere else in Florida. Don't come down here to vacation, okay? These, these, this is going to take a long time along the beach. But if you're coming down here because you have a property, you're going to fix it, restaurants are open, power's back on, internet's starting to get back on for most people, and crap like that is all functioning. But if you're talking about walking along the beach at Fort Myers Beach, who knows how long that could take. Um, cleaning up the sand is going to seem to be quite the interesting challenge because it's contaminated. There's parts where the mangroves have pieces of mobile homes and houses and wood and boats and stuff. Who knows how long that's going to take to clean up. And then you've got the ocean. It looks like in some parts of Bonita Beach, for example, garbage was sucked and cars were sucked into the ocean. So I don't know if they have to comb along the coast and see how they're going to clean it. The water's still dirty. Maybe on a clear day they can take some satellite photos and start to see when there's more garbage and debris. Who knows how long this process is going to be. Uh, and keep in mind that most of the beaches are federal, so you're not going to get in there either way. So it's going to be a long, lengthy process. That's why we left Fort Myers and came up here to Sarasota. So my beaches are still functioning, my restaurants are still open, and, and the inconveniences that are going to start to pop up now is really what's going to happen. People are going to get hurt now trying to fix their homes. People are going to get mold sickness from being inside places that leaked. People are going to get, they're going to step on a nail from a roof and it's going to uh, send them to the hospital, etc., etc. All these complications. Traffic is going to be incredibly horrendous. You haven't seen traffic until you see what this season is going to be like. Electrical trucks, cleanup crews, contractors, builders, traffic is going to be horrendous. So it's going to be a nightmare for the next two years. Again, that's why we moved up to the Sarasota Bradenton area where the beaches are still functional, the museums are still open, the palm trees look beautiful, and, uh, and I recommend the rest of you people do the same thing. Go to Palm Beach, go to Broward, uh, maybe I can make a top 10 video, 10 places you can go to other than Southwest Florida. Stay out of the way because it's an inconvenient mess, and it's gonna be an inconvenient mess for at least the next year. It's gonna take a long time. Um, I mean, you gotta rebuild, and they're talking about the permit process, which would probably take over a year to figure that out. So, no, this isn't going to get sorted out. Like, Fort Myers Beach isn't going to be sorted out for the next two years, year and a half, two years probably. But if you're, like, in a sterile Florida, we were just in a sterile Florida inland, eating at a restaurant, a great Italian place called Marcellus. They used to be in Bonita, eating good Italian food. 
shopping back to normal. Anyways, that's what it is. Uh, it's going to be more inconvenient and dangerous moving forward than during the storm. People are going to step on nails. You're going to get flat tires on your car. It's going to stink. And if the red tide comes in, that's going to be the final complication. It's really going to make life unbearable down there. So the inconvenience has only begun, even though the main infrastructure is in place. Just like I said, now it's a recovery process, a very lengthy process. Check it out.